This video came because somebody on Patreon asked me this question. He asked me, you know, what are the four essential skills that somebody graduating from high school ought to have? It's a really good question, actually. So uh, I gave it some thought, and here's my answer. Don't worry, I'm not going to spread this out over 15 minutes. I'm going to tell you right now what are the four things. The number one thing that you ought to be good at, that you should uh, have some skill at when you graduate from high school, when you're 18, is you should be good at public speaking, and specifically, you should be good at giving presentations. The second thing you ought to be good at is basic finance. I'm talking both personal finance and corporate finance. You should be able to read a spreadsheet. You should be able to financially plan for yourself and look at the plans of a company or, or other individuals or what have you and, and be able to make some sense of it. The third thing you ought to be competent at when you're 18, when you finish high school, is you ought to be able to speed read a book or text, no matter how long, be able to skim through it and figure out quickly what is the basic premise or argument of the book. And the fourth skill that you should have is being able to anticipate the effects of any given action, both your own actions and the actions of somebody else. Now, each of these skills is essential for your success and your development as a man. Now, you should know these skills by the time you're 18, but if you're, say, 22, 25, 30, 35, and you still aren't competent in one of these four skills, well, then you have to work at it, okay? Work at it pronto, because these four skills are essential to your life. Let's get to the first one. Now, public speaking, what's public speaking? Well, obviously, it's talking in front of people. Talking in front of people and getting them to understand what you are thinking and more to the point, convincing them that what you're thinking, that your conclusions, that your beliefs, your thoughts, your ideas are the correct ones. Now, this is a skill. Public speaking, talking to a lot of people is a skill that you have to practice and you have to study. It's not something that you know you magically have. I, look at me. Do you think that I'm able to do this, you know, just because I was born this way? I was like a magician that had this ability? No, I had to practice it. I worked for three and a half years as an English teacher, English as a foreign language in Chile and Peru and Bolivia, right? And during those three and a half years, I had to stand in front of people and, and explain to them the English language and how to speak English properly. And that's how I gained the ability to speak in front of people. It's essential. But not just public speaking. I mean, when you think of public speaking, a lot of times you're thinking of like giving a speech, okay? No, don't think of it like that. Think of it when you're in close quarters with say between three and 12 people and you are trying to convince them of something important. Because see, this is the basis of all corporate meetings. So you're in a room with three, four, a dozen other people and you are telling them what you think should be done, what is the right approach to any given situation. You have to master the ability to present your ideas in a logical uh, a framework, in a logical order, and not only in a logical order, but in an order that convinces them, okay? This kind of close quarter speaking, that's what I'm really talking about when I'm talking about public speaking. You know, talking in front of a crowd of a thousand people, that's going to happen once in a while, right? In my own case, I've spoken to a crowd of over 500 people exactly twice, okay? Once was my confirmation when I was uh, 14, 15 years old, right? I, I read a passage from the Bible in front of the whole church, and there were like, I don't know, five, 600 people. The other time, I was speaking to a crowd of people at a movie premiere, a, a movie that I'd produced and directed, and I was telling them about it and blah, blah. Those were the only two times in my 51 years that I've spoken to a large crowd. But insofar as speaking to a small group of people, I'm talking three, six, nine, a dozen, I've done that hundreds of times because that is how business is done. That is how you sell a business or buy a business or, or any kind of business interaction, it's always a small meeting and you have to get good at those meetings. See what I'm saying? 
That's why public speaking is the number one skill that you should have. Now, the second essential skill you should have by the time you're 18 years old is personal and corporate finance, what's commonly known as microeconomics. If you don't know what microeconomics is, just look it up. This is essential. And let me explain why. See, personal and corporate finance is all about planning. That's what it's all about. A spreadsheet, any kind of financial model. Well, what is it trying to do? It's trying to predict the future. And it's actually quite successful. I mean, if you put on a spreadsheet, you know, each column is a month into the future and each line is an expense that you're likely going to have and you fill up all the little boxes with all the relevant for information, then you're going to have a pretty clear idea of your expenses for the next year, two years, five years, 10 years, 50 years, if you wanted so, you know? I mean, it's going to be very easy for you to plan. And this is important because when you are able to plan your finances, you're going to be able to save money or invest wisely in things that will give you returns. And more to the point, if you are able to plan, create a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet that tells you where your expenses are going to go, you're going to be able to say to yourself, you know, yes, I have to buy this item because it's essential for these reasons that are right there on the spreadsheet, but I'm not going to buy this toy or this uh, trinket or this trivial little thing or go on a you know, $10,000 vacation to Tahiti because if I do that, my financial plan is going to be shot. You see how important it is? You see how important it is to master spreadsheets. I mean, if you want to boil it down, boil down the issue of personal and corporate finance, boil it down to the issue of learning how to manipulate and read a spreadsheet, how to work an Excel sheet. You figure that out and you're going to be pretty much set. And this is important because it will be hard to fool you because a lot of times businesses will try to fool you or, or slide a fast one by you, right? because they're going to be counting on your financial ignorance and this you have to avoid. And so that's why it's so important to understand budgeting, understand personal finance, understand corporate finance, the basics of a, uh, um, of, of, of a Corpman statement, of a corporate financial statement, being able to, to see the, the, the liabilities and the, the, the um, expenses and all the rest of it. Uh, the words are slipping my mind right now as I'm telling you, but I think you get the point, okay? It's all about understanding spreadsheets. You understand spreadsheets and you're gonna be able to understand your own financial life and the financial life and destiny of companies. And this is important because if you can figure out where a company is going, you're going to be able to either invest in that company or avoid that company as the case may be. That is why this is so important. Now, the third skill that you should really know is speed reading. Oh yeah. See, as you get older, you're going to be confronted with a whole bunch of books and text and information that you're going to have to digest quickly. Now, of course, if you see this giant book that's a thousand pages long and, and you know, you have to know the basic information about that book by, you know, next Tuesday, then you have to learn to digest that information quickly. Now, this is actually one of the skills that is taught in college, not on purpose, of course. It's taught in college or people learn it in college because they have this big exam and they were supposed to have read like five, 10, 20 books. And by the time of the exam, they haven't read a one of those books, right? And so they just start skimming through them and trying to figure them out as quickly as possible for, before the exam, right? Yeah, that's one of the, 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 the things that you learn in your, your college procrastination, right? But actually, it's something that you should be learning by the time you're 18. Because you see, it's not just college exams where you're going to have a lot of information. You're going to have a lot of information insofar as the news is concerned. You're going to have a lot of information in your job. You're going to have a lot of books, text, material that you're going to have to digest quickly. And the sooner you learn how to skim through a long book or a long piece of text, the better you'll get at it. The sooner you learn it and the more you do it, of course. I mean, this is something that you have to practice. One of the problems I noticed, in myself at least, is that when I skim a book, I often does not feel as if I'm missing out. But then later I realized I wasn't missing out. 
And so you have to get over this because I've noticed that it's a, it's a common thing with a lot of people who skim through a lot of text or speed read through a lot of text, right? They think that they're missing out. More likely than not, you're not, okay? More likely than not, as you gain practice and experience at skimming through text and speed reading a lot of material, your mind is going to quite naturally latch on to the important bits of information that your eyes are skimming through. Right? But you have to force yourself, you have to push yourself, okay? Because it'll be very tempting for you to sort of like sit there and start like reading through something and savoring the language and going over and over and over again and wasting time. And that's the thing, see? You're trying to get through all this material because you don't have the time. And it's important for you to get a, a good general overview of the material. You see, because the fact of the matter is, it's often more important to get a good general overview of material or a topic or whatever, rather than know the nitty gritty of it. A lot of times there are guys who are gonna know the nitty gritty of it, but aren't going to be able to see the overarching view of it. Uh, you know, like the, the, the saying goes, you know, he, he can't see the forest for the trees, right? The forest is the macro, the trees is the, the little thing, the specifics, right? A lot of guys bore in so heavily on the specific that they lose sight of the overarching view. And this is often is not more important than the specifics because see, the specifics, you can be slightly mistaken about the specifics. You could forget about a, 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 a little thing, a little data, whatever, a little bit of information that's very small. You can afford to ignore that or forget it or, or not know it, but you can't afford not to understand the overarching view of it, see? It's, think of it like in these terms, see, it's like a map, right? A map of a country. Suppose you know every square block of one city, right? One city, you know every single square block, but the rest of the geography and the layout of the whole country, you're completely ignorant. How useful is that? Hmm? Not very. It's better for you to have a good overarching sense of the whole country and be a little bit vague about the specifics of a city than the opposite, you see? And see, this is why it's so important to master the art of speed reading, so that you can get the overarching view of something and not get lost in the little details. And the fourth skill you must master as soon as possible is the ability to anticipate the effects of any given action. Now, this seems kind of like trivial, right? It, it, you hear me talking about this and you're like, you know, thinking, well, that's really fucking obvious, right? It's not, it's not, you'd be surprised. I mean, like, I remember very clearly when I was 18 years old and I would do things or I would see other people do things and I would not be thinking about the effects of that action, what effects that action would have in a day, two days, a week, a month, a year. I wouldn't even realize it. And it's something that I've noticed that young people are kind of like blind to, okay? And they're blind to, but if you sort of like point them in this direction, they realize how important it is, and it is. It's crucial to anticipate what any action is going to have as its effect. It's, I can't emphasize it enough. Let me give you a simple example, an obvious example, drugs. You know, if you shoot heroin, what's going to be the effect of that? Well, the short-term effect of shooting heroin is that you're going to probably feel kind of sick because most people who shoot heroin for the first time don't feel that good. But you're also going to get high and you're going to feel great about it, right? But then what is going to be the effect of that? You're going to get addicted to that feeling, that feeling of, of being high on heroin. And so you're going to want more heroin. And so you're going to spend all your money. And what's going to happen after that? You're going to spend all your money on heroin and then you're going to run out of money and so you're going to resort to stealing, right? That, that's going to be the inevitable effect. Heroin, crack, you know, whatever illegal drug you want to name. But you, you see my point. See, if you carry out the action of shooting up heroin, you are going to have effects. Effects on your life. And these effects on your life are going to be catastrophic, right? By the flip side, Suppose you carry out the action of every day for 30 minutes working out as hard as you can, I mean, lifting weights, doing crunches, whatever the hell, right? 
you exercise as much as possible every day for 30 minutes. What are the effects of that action going to be? You see? You see what I'm talking about? You see, I remember when I was 18. I remember that I didn't think of the effects of my actions. I never, I never considered them. I, I was sort of like randomly going through life just doing things. Doing things because I was forced to do them because of my parents or my school or whatever. Or because it was just like, oh, you know, might as well do this. It was like a whim, right? Yeah, I would do things at random or arbitrarily because either I was compelled to do so or, you know, the mood moved me to do this. I never thought of the effects. And that is something that, <laughs> it pains me to admit it, it took me a long time, an embarrassingly long time, to realize that, you know, when I would do something, there would be an effect. And I could anticipate that effect, right? It took me a long time to realize this and I'm so ashamed and embarrassed at this point because a lot of times when I was young I would do things that had such negative effects on my life and my well-being but you know I, I, I didn't consider what would happen. I wasn't anticipating the effects of my actions and that's the attitude of a child. See, uh, I have two small children. I have a six-year-old and a four-year-old, right? And they do all kinds of silliness because they, they don't consider the effects of their actions, right? Uh, you know, they, they plucked up a sink once and flooded the bathroom because they thought, oh, you know, it'd be great to put like paper and, and paper gets all soggy and cool and they just plugged it up, plugged up uh, the bidet as a matter of fact. And they, they plugged it up and it just overflowed and it just flooded the, the bathroom and they didn't think. Of course not, because they're children, right? They're children, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. Of course, they don't have any sense, right? But what happens is that for various reasons, we have encouraged young people to continue to behave like children, especially in this regard of not anticipating the effects of their actions. It happens all the time. It happens all the time to high school kids. It happens all the time to college kids. It happens all the time to adults who should know better. I mean, people who are 25, 30, 35, they fail to anticipate the effects of their actions. Now, how do you learn to anticipate the effects of your actions? Very simple. You look at other people. You look at other people, you notice what they're doing. You pay attention to their actions and to yourself, like a private scorecard. You say to yourself, well, you know, if he does this, what's the effect of that? Oh, what's going to happen because of that? And, and you just like make a mental note. Make a mental note and see if what you anticipated actually does happen. And you'll quickly find out it's very easy to anticipate what will happen from any given effect. Mm -hmm. From any given action rather. It's very easy and it's something that you get good at with practice. And you know what is the best practice for this? Or let me phrase that. Not the best practice. The best way to learn to anticipate uh, the, the effects of any given action. 19th century novels. Oh yeah, because you know, the novels of like Balzac, Dickens, Dostoevsky, you know, the, the big guys of the 19th century. I'm not talking 20th century, I'm talking 19th century. The big novels, you know, uh, Crime and Punishment, you know, Great Expectations and what have you, they are all about causality. Action, reaction, cause, effect. And, and they are studies in causality insofar as human beings and free will and human nature. And these novels that a lot of people today in contemporary literature, literary circles rather, sort of like belittle, well, they were amazing pieces of art because they teach us human beings about ourselves. They teach us by showing us human beings, real characters, doing things and the effects that those actions have. And often as not, those effects are catastrophic. Often as not, they are disasters. I mean, Anna Karenina, for instance, it's a disaster. Madame Bovary, disaster, you know, but these disasters teach us. That's the point. Study classic novels of the 19th century and you are going to learn a great deal 
about how to anticipate. Because what's going to happen, of course, is that you're going to read about these characters. And as you're reading about them, you're going to say to yourself, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to have like a terrible life if you do that. And of course, the characters do it. And you see, you see the beauty of these novels? Yeah. 19th century novels. That's what you should be reading to learn this skill. How to anticipate the effects of any given action that you carry out or that somebody else carries out. Now, these are the four skills that you should master by the time you're 18. Now, if you're older, like I said, you know, get with it and learn these skills because they are essential. There are lots of other skills that are useful to have, right? And I could have done a video where I was like all witty and said, oh, you know, you should be good at discerning great wines or good at making love, right? Now, it's perhaps useful to be able to discern what is a great wine, and it is, in fact, essential to be able to be good at sex, right? But these four skills that I've outlined are really important. And insofar as I'm concerned, I mean, I love this question from this guy from Patreon because it made me think about this, you know? It made me think and, and ask myself, you know, if I could go back in time and talk to my 18-year-old self, what would I tell him? What would be the skills that I would want him to master? These are it. These four skills are the skills that he should know. Public speaking, especially in small groups between three and a dozen. Basic personal and corporate finance. Essentially, knowing how to work and read a spreadsheet. How to speed read a book or text. A lot of information. How to get the basics of a lot of information in a short period of time. And how to anticipate the effects of any given action. Any given action that I carry out or any given action that somebody else carries out. Master these four skills and um, your life will probably be pretty damn good.